Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Who? who? Okay, Tony, we're gonna let you handle the welcome to this lovely right. crew. Always put the pressure on. <laughs> put the pressure on. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I'm so pleased uh, to be here uh, because we're looking to bring in our newest class. Um, part of leadership is taking the time to think strategically about where you want to see your team or your association go. Uh, it's about, you know, taking out your crystal ball, looking into the future, uh, seeing, you know, where you are now, where you need to be in the future. And, you know, one of the things that, that, that we did a number of years ago um, was to look at how we can develop future leaders. And I'll let, you know, I will let uh, uh, Catherine and, uh, you know, some of the others, Gail, you know, you guys can talk about that, but the history of LEP. Uh, all I want to say is that the Leadership Accelerator Program is born out of leadership, right? It's, it was born out of a discussion uh, many years ago. It took time for it to develop. And I think one of the key lessons that I would like everybody who's going to be in the next class to really learn and understand is that change doesn't really happen overnight. Uh, change happens over time. Uh, people work together. Uh, change is about sharing ideas. It's about creating common, you know, developing common goals and getting on, on a, working with a team. And so it's a long process. It's an arduous process sometimes, but it's also an exciting process. And when you see where we are today with our leadership accelerator program, when you see what has come out of that, uh, some of the leaders that we have today have come out of our first, second, and third classes. Uh, we already have directors, committee chairs, uh, you know, at the, at the local level, the state level. It's really amazing how far we've come. And you look at what we did at Lobby Day, how many first timers that were there. You know, this is about bringing in new people and it's about developing and creating new leaders. We don't obligate you to participate more at Hudson Gateway, you know, if you take on this. Uh, if, if you get into the Leadership Accelerator program class, we don't have any strings attached. We want you to be a better, better leader, uh, not just for HGAR if you choose to be, but at home for your family, for your business, for your teams. Um, rather than just saying a few words of welcome, nice to be here, glad you can come, enjoy the rest of the program. I'll see you next time. Uh, I don't want to say that. You know, I just want to talk a little bit about about leadership. You know, being a leader is really not about you. Um, you're going to apply, hopefully, uh, for a position in this class. And hopefully you'll get it. And if you don't get it, hopefully you'll apply next year. And if you don't apply next year and you don't get into the class this year, that doesn't mean you can't be a leader. So leaders, leadership is not about being a president or being a treasurer or being a director. L leadership is about having passion for what you do. Uh, it's about commitment. It's about commitment to improving your association, your organization, your team, your business. Um, it's about making a difference. It's about inspiring and motivating other people. So it's it's not about you. It's about making you better so that you can make other people better. That's really, for me, what the core of leadership is. And I think there are a lot of things you're going to learn uh, during this whole process, you'll see. Uh, but I think the key thing to remember is that, you know, being a leader is really not about you. It's about being a better you so that you can bring out the best in other people. And that's what I've seen in this association. And I've, I've been involved in other associations. I've been a member of other associations. I am a member of other associations. Um, and I've been involved in, in leadership. In, in this association and other associations going back to 2009. Um, I've seen what other associations do and I see what we do. I am so proud. I am so proud to be a member of Hudson Gateway Association of Realtors because when I see what we've achieved over the years, we're leaders. We are leaders. We are leading 
other associations and, and everything that we do because our membership is engaged every day. We are progressive, not in a political way. We're progressive because we're proactive. We, we realize what we need to do, where we need to go. And when we make a decision, we go full speed ahead. That's what we do as an association. And I wanna thank the leaders who are here today. Um, I wanna thank Gail, because this was her little baby, um, you know, and, and it, it, it wasn't a, a nine month pregnancy, Gail, it took a little longer, uh, but you know, well, we have a beautiful baby uh, that was born out of it. You know, Catherine, Catherine de Klerk, uh, you know, tremendous amount of work uh, that she put into this, uh, our entire staff, Jana, Kathleen, you know, all the people that have invo been involved in this over the years, um, the people who graduated from our LAP classes. I think Cheryl Williams, you were a graduate, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I am. Cheryl and, and Emron was a graduate. And I'm the one the, the first the class, the first class. The first class and, and and Nan. And of course, all of them are now committee chairs, directors. Um, so they've really moved on up. Uh, moved up the ladder. But again, it's not about a ladder uh, because it's about participating. It's about showing up. It's about learning. Um, don't expect to be the president or the treasurer or a director or a committee chairperson. Don't expect it to be about you. Expect it to be about the association. That's what your focus should be. It's about learning, understanding what goes on every single day because you can't be a leader unless you understand what the process is. And if you don't understand what the process is, your first inclination as a leader is gonna be like, well, let's just tear everything down and we'll start over again. That's really not how it works. You know, our association has been around for over a hundred years. People have devoted countless hours of their time and hours, I mean, countless hours every week, you know, not every year, every week. Um, People have built something wonderful that you should be proud of. And I want you as future leaders, whether you're an officer, a director, or a member of a committee, or just a member in general, I want you to be leaders who participate every day because taking the LAP courses, that's not what's gonna make you a leader. It's gonna guide you. But being a leader means being engaged and being involved from the very, very beginning and about learning. And I'm just gonna end with just a few points about what I think is important about being a leader. I think the most important thing about being a leader is listening. If you're always doing the talking, you're never gonna learn. And learning is not just about hearing what's right. Nobody really knows what's right all the time. It's not always about getting the right answer. Learning is about hearing other people. It's about hearing other voices, other perspectives, okay? Because those other voices, those other perspectives help formulate your ideas and your thought. So if you're shutting people out, if you're shutting ideas out, you're not developing. You're not developing your own ideas. So listening is about collaborating, talking, having an environment that's open for the sharing of ideas and for conversation. So that's that's the first thing. And as they say, you know, God gave everyone two ears and one mouth for a reason, because you should be doing twice as much listening as you are speaking. Although I do tend to talk a lot. The other thing I want to mention is communication. One of the most important things about being a leader is communicating. And communicating is not just about you talking. Okay, communicating is about having a conversation with people that is two-way, okay? It incorporates listening, okay? It's about empathizing with what somebody else is saying. It's about listening. So communicating is not just about messaging. It's not just about telling people where you think things should be going or how you think, should, you think things should be going. It's about listening and having a conversation. The other thing is about knowledge. 
I don't think you can expect to be a leader just by showing up and becoming a director or a committee chair. It's not the name, it's not the title. It's about your understanding of whatever organization you're a part of. How does it work? What's the process that's happening in the background? Okay, who's involved? What are, what are the positions? What are the committees? How does everything work together? And only when you understand that can you really understand in your mind where you think the problems might be and how you think those problems can be solved. So you really have to have a solid understanding of how your organization works in order for you to be an effective leader. And a lot of times that takes experience. It takes studying. It takes patience. So when you, if you're a part of the LAP and you complete the course successfully, the program successfully, you're not going to automatically be a leader, but you're going to be on your way. But the, ne the next step is to be engaged. That's the most important part of it. it. It's not about taking a class or taking a series of courses. It's about being engaged. The most important thing about being a leader is being engaged from day one, listening, communicating, understanding. The other thing that I want to suggest is extremely important. And this ties in to the listening and the communicating part is that we have to acknowledge that there isn't always a right answer. There isn't only one solution on how to approach a problem. So we have to understand that we work with a lot of different people. We have 14,000 members. We have 25 or 26 people on our board of directors. We have committee chairs. We have so many volunteers who participate on our committees. You have a lot of people that you have to work with every single day to make this organization work. And that's not even including all the people on the staff who are partners with you. So what's important is about being a leader is not about pushing your ideas, pushing your agendas. It's about building a consensus. Because again, it's not about you. It's about building a consensus, getting people to understand where you're coming from, understanding where other people are coming from, from finding a common ground, and working toward that goal. And you don't always reach the conclusion that you think you need to be at. But if you could take a step forward, and then from there take another step forward, that's what being a leader is about. That's what I think. It's about consensus. You will never have 100% of the people around you agree with everything that you say. You'll never have that. And if you think that you're going to have that, I think you've already failed as a leader. So it's not about getting everybody to agree with you. It's about building a consensus and having an open and transparent process that gets you there. Okay. So creating that level of expectation for yourself as a leader, I think, is very, very important. And the final thing I want to leave you with, because it's something that I think I, I didn't write any books on leadership. Um, I didn't take the LAP class. I learned from, you know, from my experience, I learned by watching Gail and Catherine and, and Ron Garofalo and all the people that, that were, were presidents and directors and leaders before us. And, and I think that leadership is part of a process. You learn. You learn from the people before you, the people who are with you. And you also learn that when you start something, you don't just end it when that person's leadership term ends. You continue it and you build on it. We don't, we don't forget about what happened in 2018 or 2019 or 2020. We take steps and we build every year. It's a process. And we work together as a team and we build on what we have. But the most important thing, I think, is enthusiasm and engagement of our members. Because I think that one of the issues that you'll find as a leader, whether you're in your high school club 
or whether you're in the local book club, I don't know, whatever you belong in, uh, probably you're always going to have the same people showing up to everything, right? That's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. I give credit to those people who show up all the time because they want to dedicate their time. They want to make a difference. Give credit to them. Don't take away from, from those people who show up all the time, every single day. You're always going to have people who just will never show up to anything. That's okay. Focus on the people in the middle. Focus on the people who are not actively engaged, who are not always listening, not always paying attention, but maybe there's a, they have an interest. You've got to find different ways to reach out to them, different ways to communicate to them, different ways to get your message across. And that's a challenge. It's a really big challenge. But one of the ways that you can be a leader, I think, is by being enthusiastic about what you do. Be motivated yourself. Don't tell somebody this is what you should do and this is how you should do it unless you're doing that yourself. Show up. Be engaged yourself. Show your enthusiasm and create that excitement in people. Let them be a part of something that's bigger than them. All of you can be a part of that. So I want to encourage you to apply for the Leadership Accelerator Program. It's, it's a phenomenal program. There are not a lot of associations that offer this type of program. We're not the only one by far, but, but there really aren't a lot of associations that offer something like this. This is really a unique opportunity for you, not only to learn about how to be a leader, but also to develop a friendship with your fellow students, with the staff, with the members and the volunteers and the leaders of Hudson Gateway. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity. I'm really, really, really excited that we're now going into our fourth year of this. It's something to really be proud of. And, and I can't wait to start year four and I can't wait to work with all of you. So thank you for joining us today. And I will hand it over to Gail or Catherine. Thank you very much, Tony. That was uh, great to hear your perspective and insights on leadership and on the program. And I hope that Tony has inspired some of you to already start thinking about that this may be something that you want to be part of. Um, so good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm Gail Fatizi. I am a past president of the Hudson Gateway Association of Realtors and current president of the Hudson Gateway Realtor Foundation. Uh, my year as president was in 2020, and we all know already too many times over what happened in 2020. So yes, I was the pandemic president. I think uh, Anthony Jomathodi coined that one. Um, but despite the pandemic that year, um, it was in 2020 that we actually launched the Leadership Accelerator Program, uh, which was one of my priorities that year. And it was my intent to, to get it off the ground, not in the way that we had to ultimately do the program that first year. Um, I had visions of a very interactive and engaged in-person program over the 10 months, and it ended up that first year being a fully Zoom program. And the participants in our first leadership class actually didn't even meet in person until their graduation the following June, but they managed to um, bond and, and really connect with each other and are still connected with each other. So it does, uh, along with all of the learning and the leadership skills and everything else, um, it really does give you a network of people that are probably going to be in your professional life for a very long time. And, and the connections are really, I think, priceless. Uh, so I just want to talk a little bit, share a little bit about why the program was developed and what the intention and objectives of the leadership accelerator program are. So it's something that had been on my mind prior to 2020 um, in my role um, as incoming president. And in 2019, we did our strategic plan, which is something we do every few years for the association. And it really sets a blueprint for what the association is looking to do and to accomplish over the next three years. It's generally a three-year plan, sometimes a little longer or shorter. But um, one of the things that 
became very clear during that strategic planning process was that we needed to create some sort of more streamlined path for members who wanted to become involved in the association and to be part of the association's future. And as part of the strategic plan, one of the things that we did do was uh, we had five pillars in the strategic plan. One of them was leadership and we created a task force for each of the pillars. And so there was a leadership task force, which I was part of. And during that process of, of working with that task force, that was where the framework of the leadership accelerator program uh, was, was really formed. I joked for a long time that I was part of the association volunteering in different capacities for probably a good 10 years before I finally felt like I understood enough about the association to take things a step further. And it was a situation where there just wasn't anything like this leadership accelerator program to kind of fast track my understanding. And there are so many levels to our association. Yes, there's HAR, there's also NISAR, there's NAR, there's Women's Council, there's the Young Professionals Network. So there are all these different, um, there's RPAC, of course. So all of the different elements that go into learning about the association and understanding completely what we do, what those other associations do, how it all works together, how things mesh and where, where we can make a difference. And during the strategic plan, it became very clear that we didn't have 10 years to wait for new leaders to step up, that we really needed to have a, a process in place where people who wanted to take leadership roles in the association could sort of fast track and understanding, obviously you can't fast track experience, but you can fast track knowledge and understanding and exposure and, and getting to know the people, the players and how everything works. And so that was really the impetus for the Leadership Accelerator Program. The objectives of the program are to identify future leaders, and to give them the opportunity to explore and expand their leadership skills, and then to empower these future leaders by providing that knowledge-based foundation that they need to serve in leadership roles, both personally and professionally, and to make the process a little more streamlined, a little shorter, a little easier for the individual and for the benefit of the association and all our members so that everybody realizes the benefits of those leadership skills sooner. Um, there are people who just don't know where to start. Um, and so giving them this program to kind of kickstart their involvement, or maybe there are people who are involved. I, I know for me initially, I, I back in the, I started volunteering for each year back in the day when we used to get our dues invoices on a piece of paper. And with it came another piece of paper that said, if you want to volunteer and, and help out your association, check off the box for whatever you're interested in. So I checked off a box that said education committee and somebody reached out and said, great, we'd love to have you serve on the education committee. And that was how I started. Most people start by invitation, somebody invites them to be part of something, whether it's join a committee, be part of a project, a task force, whatever it might be. Um, and so I think, I guess I was unusual in that I just kind of stepped up and said, okay, I wanna, I'll check a box and do this. But from that point, it did become other people inviting me to take on other responsibilities and get more involved. Um, so the first year that we did offer the Leadership Accelerator Program in 2020, we got quite a lot of applicants. We were thrilled to have an inaugural class of 12 participants that were selected that year. And we had the second year, 11 participants, I believe this year, 11 participants as well. And the experience, the success that I have seen from the participants in these first three Leadership Accelerator uh, program classes have really exceeded my greatest hopes and expectations for the program. Um, there's a, a, let's see, that was last year's class and this is this year's class. We have pictures of all three of our classes and um, of the participants from these cl three classes, we have so many people that have already stepped up as Tony was referencing. Um, members of LAP who are part of the board of directors for HAR, part of the board of directors for NISAR, 
um, even I believe one participant who is on the NAR board. Uh, we have people who are chairing committees um, and we aren't showing you all of the folks who are also just involved in serving on various committees. So we have a couple of those folks here with us today who are gonna speak to you a little bit about their experience and answer questions about their experience with the Leadership Accelerator Program and then what they've been doing since and how it's made a difference for them. Um, so there are, you know, there are several paths that these new leaders are taking. Some of them are involved, like say committees, board of directors, the foundation. We have a couple of um, leadership accelerated graduates who are serving in leadership roles on our realtor foundation as well. So it's really about finding what your passion is and what your skill set is and taking the knowledge and information that you get from the Leadership Accelerator Program and tying those together to find the path that's right for you to find the level of involvement and where you wanna make a difference in our association. Um, I will say one of the things that was one of my biggest thrills recently was going to Lobby Day. And we had, we go up to Albany once a year and meet with our legislators and this year we had over a hundred people there representing the Hudson Gateway Association of Realtors, which was the, the largest turnout we've had from our association. Of course, there are associations from all over the state that are represented there, but just from HGAR, there were over a hundred participants there. And of those over 20 of them were past or present leadership accelerator program participants. And I, I looked around and I was just so excited to see that. And I said to Jana, we've got to take a picture because I want to just be able to show everybody how involved our Leadership Accelerator Program graduates and participants are and have been um, at, the, at that level of going up to New York, to New York State, to Albany, to, to lobby for our, our realtor causes. So there's a picture of, of all of them at, uh, at lobby day. And everyone in that picture is has been involved with the Leadership Accelerator Program. So I'm sure you're thinking, okay, who are we looking for to participate? How do you get involved in, in uh, the Leadership Accelerator Program? And to Tony's point, talking about you know the, the things that define good leaders. And there are lots of different traits that people would cite as defining good leaders. And if you ask 20 people, you probably get 20 different answers. I think there are a number of traits that would come up repeatedly, uh, certainly passion, clarity, integrity, honesty, vision, decisiveness, um, being altruistic, um, focus. So there, there are a lot of traits that would be cited and I'm, I'm not even touching on, on dozens more. And you may have a sense that you are a good leader or that you could be a good lead leader given the, given the opportunity and you just don't know where to start or you haven't had a chance to demonstrate your leadership skills. And we wanna give you that opportunity. Um, maybe you've been a leader in your personal life, in your family life, whatever it may be. There's, as Tony mentioned, lots of different levels of leadership and lots of different ways that you can show up as a leader. Um, but we do want you to consider the Leadership Accelerator Program as an opportunity to hone your leadership skills, your innate skills that so many of you have already. Um, we do want you to take this information that you get today and share it out with others in your office. Uh, again, the, the participants in the program have been broker owners, they have been managers, they have been agents. Uh, so every level of, of uh, experience and involvement in the association has been represented in the leadership accelerated classes. Um, and again, most leaders do get involved because somebody invites them, somebody extends an invitation to say, come do this with me, you, or I think you'd be great at come participate. Um, so I'd like you to look at today's session as a personal invitation from me, from Tony, from Catherine, from all of us uh, that are participating with the program to develop your leadership skills and use them to benefit your association, your career, your team, yourself, your family, whatever level of involvement you want to have. Again, Tony said there, there is no um, obligation 
So if you are a graduate of the Leadership Accelerator Program, there's nothing that you have to sign that says, okay, after I participate, I'm going to spend the next three years in, you know, uh, serving on committees or whatever. That's going to be something that's hopefully going to develop and something that you're going to want to do afterwards, that you're going to want to take what you've learned and your newfound knowledge and skill set and use that for a greater good and be part of this Realtor Association. So we're going to give you some more specific details about the program. I'm going to turn it over to Catherine DeClerc and let her give you some of the specifics. And, um, and then we're going to have our, two of our past participants, again, talk to you and answer some questions, give you some information about their personal experience. So Catherine, all yours. Thank you, Gail. Um, my name is Catherine DeClerc. I am also a past president of the Hudson Gateway, the second president dating back to 2013. My experience in leadership is, is very similar to the experience that Gail had, um, play, playing a role, not really sure how all the pieces came together, taking a long time to get there. Um, and the goal of the program will be to help streamline that if you choose to move in that direction. So um, so thank you so much for being here today. I facilitate the program. So I'm at almost all of the sessions, um, except for the spokesperson training. So I'll be there with you throughout the program. As Gail mentioned, the Leadership Accelerator Program meets one of HGAR strategic goals by identifying and developing new leaders who will play a role in shaping the association's future as a dynamic and relevant organization in service of the members, as um, you know, President Tony alluded to. We're just about to complete our third class who will be graduating in June. We're gonna hear from a couple of past participants shortly, and they're gonna tell you about their own experiences. This program is not for everyone. Are you a leader in your personal life, community, business organization? Are you a good decision maker? Are you a natural born leader who wants to hone their skills, learn more about your realtor association and be a participant in the future direction of the Hudson Gateway? If so, then this program may be for you. The objective of the program is to empower future leaders by providing a knowledge base, a foundation to serve in a leadership role, both professionally and personally. So let me tell you about the program. The program will run from September of 2023 through June of 2024. There will be 10 sessions, speakers, and field work. Just like when you want your slide up, right? You don't have your slide up. There we go. You'd think I was new at this. There we go. So, the meetings are once a month, some are half day, some are full day. If scheduling permits, they will be as close as the second week of the month. Dates will be known in advance before the program starts. Let me tell you about the sessions. We kick off our first session exploring leadership styles. Beyond that, we review the HGAR organization, the committee structure and staff, one key MLS, HGAR's relationship with NAR and NISAR, and of course, we delve into HGA, our strategic plan. There will be outside presenters on the topics of economic development, leading through adversity, and legislative advocacy, advoc activism. Yeah. And here's a photo of some of our past uh, speakers as well. No program would be complete without the topic of the role of leaders, Robert's rules, running meetings, and fiduciary duties and responsibilities. You'll hear insightful viewpoints from past presidents as they share their experience as leaders of the organization. And I'm sharing with you right now a photo from one of our past presidents panels from our previous class. There will be spokesperson training, which will encompass public speaking, using judgment, and the leader's role in representing the official view of the organization. Member day and lobby day, of course, have a place in the program. And then finally, there's a class project. The participants in the program will decide what that project will be. And once that project's approved, they will have until June to execute it. The project could be something that benefits a segment or the entire membership. 
It could be something to enhance the association's image or even the association's processes. In the past, the projects have included, um, one project was automating an email onboarding campaign for new members of the Hudson Gateway. Uh, one project was a video on the value of a realtor. And our third class, the project's yet to be revealed, and that will be shared at graduation in June. So you'll know about that afterwards. So now you might be wondering, how do I get in? What's involved? Well, the program has a $250 commitment from the participant. HGAR does subsidize the balance of the cost of the program. And here are your key dates. Applications are due by June 16th. And the applicant interviews will be conducted, and those will be conducted virtually, between June 22nd through July 11th. Applicants that are accepted will have until July 24th to acknowledge their acceptance and to remit the $250 program fee. There are two prerequisites. The first will teach you the basics of volunteer leadership through a no-cost, self-paced, guided program called Realtors Excelling in Association Leadership. It covers real estate issues and trends, enhancing leadership skills, meeting management, governing documents and policies, legal and regulatory activities, visioning, planning, budgeting. The second prerequisite will be to read a book called The First Person You Must Lead Is You by Rebecca Halstead. The book will be supplied to you if you are accepted into the program upon receipt of the tuition. And so there's no additional cost for that. The application will be posted uh, and made available on HGAR's website. So now you might be thinking, what's the criteria? And I wanna echo something that Gail said. It's really for everyone. Um, it doesn't, it's, you don't have to be in the association for a certain minimum period of time. We've had brokers, we've had agents, we've had newer agents, we've had more seasoned agents. So please don't let your time, whether it's short or long, make you think that you may not be right for this program. What we're really looking for is a level of involvement as a realtor, a desire to serve in a volunteer leadership role, previous involvement as a volunteer in the community or within the Realtor Association, being able and willing to make the time commitment to participate fully in the program, and two letters of recommendation. The program is limited to 12 to 15 people to maximize the experience for everyone. At this point, I'm gonna open up the meeting to questions and I'm gonna ask if you have questions to please type those into the chat while we move on to our guest panel. And our guest panel, as I mentioned earlier, are going to be um, two past participants in the program, so graduates of the program. And I would like to introduce you to them and so they can share their thoughts on the program and answer any questions you have. And plus I have some pre-prepared questions. So first I would like to in introduce, and if Gary, if you can spotlight them, um, Emran Bayouan of Exit Realty Premium in the Bronx. He started his real estate journey when he was a full-time college student at Bronx Community College, and he was driving full-time for Uber and Lyft. Doing all that, he graduated with a degree in computer information systems and for three years has been doing real estate full-time. Um, in his short career in real estate, he has achieved a lot of awards. Last month at the Exit Realty New York Regional Awards Summit, he received five awards, a platinum award, top 10 listing agent, top 10 in closed and top 10 in sales volume, top 10 sponsoring agents. He successfully earned the certified buyer representative designation, the short sale foreclosure uh, specialist designation, as well as the C2EX commitment to excellence certification. So congratulations to Emory. He's a graduate of the second LAP class, and he is also now a member of HGAR's board of directors. So welcome, Emory. And I'd also like to introduce Nan Palumbo, who is a graduate of Fordham University. She was a market research analyst before deciding to become an entrepreneur. She's now a real estate salesperson at Greengrass Real Estate in Bronxville, and she owns another business that's been in business for 18 years. She's a graduate of the first LAP class 
currently sits on the board of directors for HGAR and also co-chairs Young Professionals Network, which provides members with a gateway to our association and industry as a whole. So thank you so much for being here today. I'm glad to see you. And again, if you have questions, I'm gonna ask that you start typing those in the chat. And in the meantime, let me throw some questions out to them and I will start ladies first. Uh, so Nan, yes. would you tell us, sorry, Imran, why did you apply for the program when you applied and what was it that interested you? Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so why did I apply to the program? I was part of the first class, which means I had no graduates to go speak to and ask questions to. Um, so I was sort of voluntold to check it out, you know, check out the info <laughs> session, find out about it. Um, and when I went to the info session, it made me realize that I had already watched my principal broker, Carmen Bauman, um, jump into leadership. And she jumped in like feet first, all in. And it was great, right? Like great positive changes in her life, but it was not without difficulty. Um, it was a very steep learning curve. So I kind of thought to myself, I really would love to get there, but preferably not in the way that she did it. Um, and I felt that LAP offered not only like a nice stepping stone, but also the guidance, the direction, a little bit of handholding, you know, to get people there if that's where they want to be. I think for many of us, we got voluntold or invited in. Um, I, I know I can think right off the top of my head of the person who invited me into my my time in uh, leadership when the very first involvement that I had. So holding the door for others is an important piece of the program. So Emran, what about you? Were you voluntold? Uh, what was it about the program that interested <laughs> you? I mean, <clears throat> hi everyone. Good morning. My name is Emran Buya. Uh, so I actually have similar story as Nan because <clears throat> my principal broker, Anthony Domatori, who was the past president for Hudson Gateway. He always, I, I, since I started with him, from the beginning of my career, he would, he would always invite me to those networking events, like RPEC event, anything that's happening around uh, Hassan Gateway. So he would always invite me and have me participate. And when that program, the he actually told me to attend the first one. I kind of, I was a new agent, like I was in the business for two years. I was like, no, no, I want to, I don't want to take this responsibility or uh, the commitment. So then I passed on the first one. Then on the, when the second term came, he said, you need to participate. So that's, and I wanted to participate because when I saw, I attended the information session and I saw there is so much information we'll be sharing on the, on the, on the session. And I want, and I just, at that time of, uh, at that time I decided I want to be in real estate full time. And I said, there is no better way to be in this business and involved with local board. And that's the best way to get in. So, and I was excited about the program and I want to thank Gail for bringing this program to us, like people who new to this industry, who does not have experience and who's not sure where to start and how to get involved. So I'm, I'm grateful for all the leadership in, in the Hassan Gateway who, who's putting their time and effort to grow this broker, um, grow this uh, organization. And I'm very glad that I attended that uh, LAP session. Yeah. Great, thank you. So my next question, and I'll, I'll stay with you, Emran. What was your favorite session? Actually, the session? there was two, yes. Uh, session two, which was uh, <clears throat> about, uh, what is it? The, uh, leadership style, that one, and uh, session eight by uh, Scott Marlock, the NICER communication director is spokesperson training spokesperson yes that that training was awesome for me yeah i used that to this day because i'm i'm not in the beginning i was an, a people person like I, I was scared to speak front of like five people maybe 10 people and that training gave us so much uh, insight on how to speak front of large group and what to say and what not to say in front of cameras and and it was very informative and I, I found it very, 
I, I used, I used, I, I learned a lot from that. And I, to this day, I still use those information that I learned to build a, the, those skills to implement in my leadership skills uh, when I'm speaking in front of large groups. So yeah, that, that was my favorite. Well, and it's funny for any of you that know Emran or you follow him on Instagram and you see the videos that he puts out, um, it, it's, you know, you, you're natural. You look natural in front of Thank him. Thank you. So <laughs> a little credit to the spokesperson training because they yeah. do go through that process of being videotaped. So yep. it's, um, you know, but you're fantastic. So awesome. And Nan, what was your favorite session? Nan frozen? Yeah, I think Nan, Nan has Nan frozen. frozen. Nan is frozen. <laughs> so when she pops back, um, we'll ask her that. So I'll jump back to Emran. Emran, um, how did you find the time commitment? I think she's back. Yeah, we'll grab her in a second. So go ahead. Okay. So how, do you, how did you yes. find the commitment to the, the 10 month program? Was it a challenge? <sighs> was it manageable? In the beginning, it, it was challenging in the beginning, I'm not going to lie, but uh, I had to make that commitment because I knew that this I needed to complete this program and I needed that. So when I had that mentality and I blocked out my calendar that, OK, when I'm attending this session, uh, I still had to do my business. So I had other help, like I had to manage my time, too. And I wasn't good at time management at the time. So it, it kind of helped me uh, also helped me manage my time well as well. So in the beginning it was tough, but as we went through session one, two, three, then I kind of when it was okay for me, but I had to manage my time. But uh, yeah. Okay, great. Nan, um, so what did you find to be your favorite session and how was the time commitment for you? So my favorite sessions had to be, um, the speech session that we did that I know Emron talked about. Um, I also was a super wallflower, always have been. Uh, and I found that to be really educational. I mean, it was so good that I want to take it again. Um, and then the second had to be lobby day. Um, and I, I think that's because for me, I was very like, I would run from politics completely, right? And now, it, I've learned that it's it's politics, but not. Um, it, Lobby Day was a real eye opener for me. It it really showed me how we can be involved. Um, you know, no party lines. It's really just about our industry. Uh, and coming from someone who like did not want to, you know, like wouldn't touch politics with a ten foot pole. When I saw the way that happened, and you know, since then we were also doing like um, co op transparency and things like that. Like all of that really made me understand that it's important. Like it's important to be up to date on what's going on in the political world because it really does affect us. I mean, here we are, we've had some great things happen in the last handful of years. Um, and I'm also relatively new in the industry. You know, I've, I've only been here for a little over five years. I was two years in when I joined LAP. Um, so it was a uh, it was a real eye opener for me, and I, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, in terms of the time commitment, honestly, I was super scared of it in the beginning. Um, but it's once a month, you know. Just so everyone knows, like I run another business. I am a single mother of two. I, you know, have a lot going on, and yet it was totally manageable. Um, I feel like when we started meeting a little more often when the projects started happening, you know, by then we had a rhythm, the whole class had a rhythm and we were able to coordinate easily, find time that all of us could be there or the, the groups that needed to be there would be there. Um, you know, it, it was not a burden that I have to say that. Can I add something actually, Catherine? Go ahead, Tony, go ahead. Something that, that, uh, that that Nan just mentioned about about lobby day and the the politics of it, um, you know, because you know everything that we do with this association, everything that we do, I, I just always want to reiterate this uh, with every meeting that we have, with every function that we have, you know, I want our members and I want the people who attend our events 
the people who volunteered are for our events to understand like what we are and what our purpose is and what we do. We are a trade association and a trade association is basically a, an organization that is made up of a group of people with like-minded interests. Uh, in our case, we're all professionals. We're all licensed. We all engage in the business of real estate. And as a trade association, our job, the job of the staff and the job of our leaders and our members is to advocate for our industry. We are here to represent our 14,000 members. Every single thing that we do, everything in our DNA is to advocate for our members, for their businesses, for their livelihoods, for our real estate industry. If you are here to save the whales, wrong club. <laughs> we can do great things with our foundation like we did last night. Tremendous work that we do for charitable organizations throughout our region. That's where we do our charitable work. We have two people that are on this meeting right now that are part of the staff, our government affairs directors, Ellie Rodriguez, Alex Rothmeyer. They do a tremendous job. They have tremendous experience. And guess what? They're here for a reason, government affairs directors, because there are people in our state, in our country, in our communities that are looking to change the real estate industry, to change property rights, okay, to eliminate or reduce the rights that we have and our ability to collect our broker's fees and our leasing fees. And there's there so many things that, that, that is out there that, that affects our industry. So as part of this class, you're learning to be leaders, but I, I want to emphasize that you are learning to be a leader if you choose to participate through Hudson Gateway. You're learning to be a leader of a real estate trade association. And so you should understand what is affecting our industry. We're not a one trick pony. We don't deal with one issue only. We deal with the real estate industry and everything that affects it. We are the voice for our members. So as you start this journey and your involvement, hopefully in Hudson Gateway, remember that just because you sell a house doesn't make you a realtor. It doesn't even make you professional. You just completed a transaction. What makes you a realtor what makes you a professional and what makes you a leader is that you step up to the plate, that you understand what's going on in our industry and that you are the voice for our membership. That is what we do. So that's, I just wanted to add that because I thought that was a very important point. And I think, and I mentioned that at every single meeting that we have, but I think there's no other more important place to mention that than right here where we're looking to develop brand new leaders. Yeah, and, and advocacy is a big part of what is part of the program that they learn about and how it all comes together. And Lobby Day really brings that whole picture um, full circle where you see it us engaging with our elected officials. So thank you, President Tony, for mentioning that. Um, let me jump back to a couple more questions before we, we run out of time. Um, Emren, how has the program impacted you personally and professionally? Um, it Oh, that's, that's a lengthy question. <laughs> it impacted me a lot, uh, especially uh, professionally, if I speak. When I decided I'm going to be in this business for a long time and I want to do this full time, I had to get involved with Hassan Gateway because, as we all know, real estate is the laws and regulation are changing every day. I mean, every month there's something happening. So there's no better way to get involved and inform. Uh, get, get informed yourself by attending the event and getting involved with Hassan Gateway. And when we're selling houses, we're realtors so focused, we're distracted with our transaction and uh, our uh, helping clients. We 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 don't focus on what's happening in the industry, and we start complaining. We everybody likes to complain, like, okay, why is this happening? Why board is not doing anything? So I didn't want to be that person. I want to. I wanted to be like, okay. It's happening, I need to say something about it. So I, in order to say something, I need to be, I need to be involved 
with the organization and I need to know what's happening. Because if I don't know what's happening, there is no way for me to get involved or voice my, or ex share my ex uh, thoughts and uh, experience. So that's one of the reasons I, I, I'm involved with the organization and, and I'm, whatever I'm learning, I'm passing this on to my agents and the people that I know that I'm working with, my colleague from different offices. And I think it's super important. I, I don't think even experienced agents understand that. I don't think they understand it, that you need to be involved with your local boards. You need to know what's happening in the industry. Otherwise, there will be no one to speak for you. You can always complain, but in order, instead of complaining, you should share your thoughts and get involved with the organization to fight for our, our business. Right, and, and to, yeah. to help make the change that needs yeah. to take place. So Absolutely. So Nan, what about you? How has the program impacted you personally or professionally? Um, your thoughts? So like Emron, right? Lengthy, lengthy answer. But to keep it compact, I would say um, I personally experienced like a tremendous amount of growth during this program and because of this program. Um, I made some big life changes and some big decisions that I totally attribute to being part of LAP. Um, and that growth, because it was inside of me, right? It wasn't like, let's learn a talent. It was like really a part of me intrinsically. It led to, you know, being a better agent, to being a better business owner, to being a happier and more determined person just as a whole. And all of that has really been reflected in every part of my life since then, I would say. Great, thank you. And if, again, everybody, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those into the chat. I know we're just gonna be wrapping up in a minute. I, I'd like to throw it out to either one of you. Um, why would you encourage anybody watching today to apply to the program? So I, I definitely have an answer for this. Um, I think the program is fantastic, right? The relationships that you build there are not just your classmates. It's your classmates and leadership. And then you take the next step in your journey. And then there are more relationships there. Your colleagues, your associates, they become friends. They are people who are in this industry who you can pick their brain. They're in different markets. The group is always super diverse. And, you know, you get to watch this evolution of classmates who become teammates and really form something strong and special and impactful. Um, for me, you know, when people ask me about LAP, I tell them that the program, the LAP program can really give you far more than what it promises. Um, I look back and the small amount of like time commitment was really a tremendous investment in myself that I really reaped the rewards of even to this day. Thank you. Emran, last yeah. thoughts? Uh, anyone who wants to be a leader and they want to get involved with the organization or also in, in general, they want to grow uh, their leadership skills. This, the, this is a great uh, class and there's, there's so many sessions that uh, will teach you how to be a leader and what are some of the, the skill set you need? And, and also working with variety of people, like people from different background, like uh, our group had 11 students. Everybody had different experience in the business and working with everyone, for, especially for the project was a lot of eye-opening and a lot of learning because working in a group project like you, you would learn a lot about other people that you can communicate. Like when we were doing our uh, project, it was a video about uh, the value of a realtor. A lot of people were scared of speaking in front of camera and a lot of people are, were natural. So we kind of came together and decided, you know what, this is a group project. We're gonna help each other to grow and help you where you're struggling. So we came together and everybody participated and helped each other complete the project. So 
And um, those 11 members, we are friends forever. We are colleagues forever. So if we need, we have a group chat right now. So if we, if anyone had any question about any, anything they need, they always reach out. So it's, it's, it's and, and the relationship, as Nan was mentioning, the, and the relationship and, that you create through this program is, I don't think you can find it anywhere else. So if you really want to be a leader in your industry, this is the place to start. Thank you, Emran. And I, I, yeah. in the interest of time, I had skipped over the relationship question, but, and you guys obviously felt that was really important, worth worth mentioning. Yeah. Um, Barbara, and I think you had a question. You wanna jump in? Didn't mean to? Okay. So I, I don't want, I know we're running a little over, so I wanna be um, cognizant of that. And I just wanna give a couple of last minute thoughts. I know I can speak for Gail when I say, if you have questions and you wanna reach out to either of us about the program, you know, our phones are always available. So we would love to talk. If you're not really sure and, and you wanna know a little bit more, don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, the program, I mean, Emran's class had a prom too, right? Didn't you have a prom? They like plan yeah. their own prom after, like <laughs> optional thing. They're funny. So they are a very tight, tight group. Um, we see that with every class. I mean, we hoped for that. Gail is a graduate of Leadership Westchester. I'm a graduate of Leadership Orange. Um, and our class was the same way in those outside programs. And we hoped that that would be something that would happen. Um, and it happens organically every year. Um, so I hope that you can. Oh, thank you, Nan, too, for putting in your number. Um, if you have questions, reach out, look for the application. Please don't miss the deadline. Um, we want, we definitely want to know if you're interested, if you have applied in the past. And, you know, due to space limitations, we're not able to get in. Feel free to apply again. Uh, that question has come up in the past. You know, are there a lot of applicants? There have been. There's always more applicants than slots available. So it is competitive, but um, don't feel because you, like I said, you maybe you haven't been in the business a long time, or maybe because you have been in the business a long time, that the program's not for you. If you have a desire to grow your leadership skills, this is the place where we can offer you um, an, an ex a very special experience that most other boards don't have. Um, that the staff and the volunteers really put a lot in to make special for you. So we hope you will consider. Gail, any final words? Um, just want to let everybody know you will get a copy of this recording so you can review it again. If you have any questions about any of the dates or anything, the information will be on the HJR website as well. And um, please share it out to others. I'm sure that there are people that might be interested in the program who weren't able to attend today or maybe just didn't think about it or, or missing seeing the, uh, the announcements, whatever. So please share out the information to anyone that you think might be a great potential leader uh, candidate for the program and encourage them uh, to apply as well. And Nan and Emron, you guys like brought tears to my eyes um, in, in the things that you said about the program and how it's impacted you. So I just wanted you guys to know that. You have the best brainchild ever, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> and we thank you for, for everything oh, you did and you're still doing. So it is it's my absolute pleasure. This is is something I, I'm just so thrilled with the participants, the relationships that have formed the 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 participation from everybody after the program is it's just been like say well beyond anything I imagined. So thank you for yeah, being part and, of I, it. I, and to Cheryl and Richard, there's people who are past uh, participants or um, a current participants who are on the Zoom today who know about the program. So I hope it's because they want to share it with other people. But thank you guys for being here and still supporting it as well. And thank many you. of the applicants that we've received were referred by other people who had been participants. So the participants are truly um, uh, uh, cheerleaders for the program having been through it. And I think that speaks volume. Um, and you know, Gail and I couldn't be more proud um, when we go into meetings or we're looking around the room and we say these are Leadership Accelerator uh, graduates who are taking on these roles or current, current participants. So we're very excited. We hope that you will join us um, and look, you know, stay tuned for the email that will follow this up. And um, please go to HGAR's website. There is a section for Leadership Accelerator if you have any, any other things you want to take a look at. Thank you so much for being here.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. You